what this documents are about. Uh, so feel free to step up and speak and ask a couple of questions. I'll be putting on some. I'll, I'll be putting on actually you know, the video back on. But if anybody wants to sort of get some questions in ahead of time, feel free. Uh, this is uh, on the YouTube channel. There's uh, uh, a website there called Firescape Academy, and there's about 350 videos there of uh, inspections throughout the country. So you can just go there and actually play. Um, and this one is actually done last year. We got about 20 videos of actually, uh, I think it was Pete and John uh, walking downtown and uh, getting direct one on one inspector training. So that's what I'll put on again. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, these are online anytime. Every time you can watch at night, you can use this to train some of your men to, uh, because these are the questions that we ask nationwide. And uh, on that same school, when you go to the playlist, uh, I have the direct inspector training with uh, Portland, with uh, Washington, D.C., Massachusetts. It's all on there, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. There's nothing better than getting a, a viewpoint from a building inspector, fire marshal, and even have housing inspectors on there, too. So it's sort of getting everybody on the same page. So if you have any questions, you know, just pop the question out. Otherwise, the class will start in about five minutes. On the official pre-started pre class restrooms are right back over here. You can feel free to get up and go use them. Uh, coffee and donuts in the back. If you need anything else, I'm going to target grabbing. Uh, I'll try not to get any down, whatever. Um, we are going to try and target breaks on the hour. So, and they'll be kind of sort of just informal flex breaks. Uh, it'll give us an official interruption to the program. Uh, and Cisco wants to Stay available for questions and stuff during that time. So if you've got side shots that you want to take at that point, uh, that's a good point to do it. And again, if anybody hasn't signed in, these are the sign-in sheets up here, and we've got the packets as well. And about what four or five minutes yet, Cisco? Yeah, I'll get. I'll start in about four or five minutes. They say, don't be shy. And it doesn't have to be inspector questions, it can be a vendor question. So if you're a vendor or engineer, you have a question, Nothing's, uh, nothing's changed since they stopped really building the major blast of every city in, in the 1930s. Okay, so uh, I'm also going to be turning on right now the, um, what's called the WebEx. And in the future, uh, in case you want to, um, Okay, we're starting, we're starting up, so we're inviting you right now. And, uh, people, uh, so, uh, okay, so I'll talk to you in a few hours. All right, good luck. Thanks. And we're going to test drive it by speaking with our LA office to say, hey, and they, that could be a fire marshal anyway. So every now and then when we have these classes and somebody can't attend, they can monitor the class from anywhere as long as they have access to a computer. We're going to start the recording process. Uh, 
my inspection of the was copyrighted, but I remember what the city they use it as a guideline to go there, so I don't starting class and this is right in um, a class that we just did last week and the uh, was at an association so right now we're teaching all the associations in Massachusetts and we happen to catch the president of the association is the state fire uh, fire code uh, inspector so the state fire code inspector Eugene Novak is actually the president of the association this is the guy everybody calls whether they don't know what to do on a situation related to the state code so he was actually the one uh, that uh, that we did the class for but then at the end we did a downtown walk around with him and this is uh, one of the results. I'll just play that while we're waiting to start the class and see if there's any more people coming in. Inspector training video. Here in Westboro. It starts getting glitchy. Do you know how to hear the inspector? We got obstructions. We got trees. Let's do a quick inspection. If I was the inspector, looking at this fire escape, I'm just doing how high as a fire escape inspector. This thing deteriorating into the ground, so all these treads can actually can actually just rip these treads. If I was the hammer test, I got rust growing in here. If I was the hammer test, this is where inspectors get hurt. They go up, and sometimes this thing will fall from a. Look at this, Gene. See, if you look at that side, you think that thing was going to give way if an inspector came down oh, unknowingly? Oh, yeah. So this, this is ready. So this is a loading dock. So this gets used all the time. But I'll be careful going up when I'm going to the I've got all this, this grading supported at the nose, and this grading support at the back, and this whole rear is all rotted out. So, oh, yeah. so now we've got loads of material coming in here. And so imagine some poor kid putting out a couch or a refrigerator. Actually, the rear, the channel is gone. So if you get underneath there, baby, you just you know, poke your nose underneath there yeah. and shoot that thing. Uh, you the the best for you are no, this is taking couches, refrigerators, whatever it may be. Yeah. It's missing its rail here, and a lot of times this is a chain rail. That's right. Yeah. So usually, uh, well, uh, if kids get over here and play around, they can fall. So it's usually missing a, a passing rail. Look at the supports into the ground, how they're rotting. And then, uh, it's just cemented into the ground as opposed to being sitting on, on, a, on a pillar. That's another problem there. There's some welds here. That I can't verify, but as soon as I put a bolt in here, I can verify this well here by putting a couple of bolts in here. So whenever you get wells, I verify this well. I don't know if I bolts. You know this rust growing in here. Okay, that really shows you how much it will push out. Yeah, it will push out. Water in the water one inch. Wow. Now, if I'm going to go up, Another obstruction, a tree. Yeah, another tree though. It's a very popular thing to have trees. A lot of people let vines grow. These vines will take a fire escape over in no time. Now this whole this whole fire escape is welded. It looks like something they used to have treads here and they came in and took the treads out and put a new one. Do you see the rusting tears coming down? Mm -hmm. That's an indication that whoever welded these and they usually weld the nose and the back of the piece in the back. The one that gets it from above is not getting the So even though it's basically the well that we're getting inside, you can see a quarter of a percent left when you step on it in the well gives way. Let me see if I can find the one that's ready to give on the way up. And that's on this side. If you look straight up here, you're going to see quite a bit. That's it. That's the one that's in the middle. All these rusty tears are indicators that water's coming in from above. The next couple of them. Okay. Now, as you can see, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the grading up here. Yeah. So, all this fire escape was kind of put together. So, this, all these brackets and all these connectors here. See, the only way I can guarantee this weld, if it's not a rust build, all I have to do to not weld this, and you can't because of the EPA requirements, you can't weld on fire escape. As soon as I put in two structural bolts here, two structural bolts, and then I seal this up with silicone. But she's laying to the ground, so that's just she's just pulling out because freezing thaw gets in here, water gets in here, 
building owners had submitted their mandatory inspection reports. There's no certification on this building. Bottom line, not one we checked in Quincy had been certified as safe. And the Director of Inspectional Services admitted because of staffing shortages, the city has no idea how many other fire escape owners are breaking the rules. And as a result, do you know how many fire escapes in your city are safe or not? Well, I don't know. In Worcester, not one we checked was certified. In Somerville, no. Four more fire escapes. Did it fall through the cracks? Yeah. Not one up to date certification. And again, no system for keeping track. How can they get away? I, mean, well, I guess that the shortage needs to evolve it because we don't have the resources to sit here and follow up on these things. If structural deficiencies are reported, local building inspectors can actually evacuate residents until repairs are made. Would you talk to us on camera about this? No. But when we surveyed two dozen more communities, most admitted they had no idea how many fire escapes were certified. In Taunton, inspectors told us they haven't seen a certification in 25 years. Northampton officials said it's a cold day in hell when that happens. In Cambridge, too, not one of our test buildings was certified, and the official in charge would not come out to discuss it. In Boston, where there are more than 8,000 fire escapes, again, according to inspectional services, not one we checked was certified. Officials know they are required to enforce the building code, but they admit they don't always know if owners are breaking the law. The building code is being ignored. Right, but it's difficult to write a violation when you don't have knowledge of something like that. But state officials say for a critical issue like this, communities should know. And they warn the Massachusetts building code is not optional. Does it worry you that these fire escapes are not being certified? This is an important issue, and it should not be. That's because after the smoke and flames begin, it'll be too late to learn you've got no way out. I can't stress it enough, Hank, that these things have to be maintained and someone's got to be watching. As a result of our investigation, state officials will now issue an alert to local inspectors. Meanwhile, if there's a fire escape on your home or office, you can contact your local building department to make sure it's properly certified. In the newsroom, I'm Hank Felicity Wright. So, let's uh, open it up to questions right there. And I'm just going to confirm to make sure my, uh, I'm sharing my desktop, which is great. Welcome to Firescape Services. And uh, let me open up um, an inspection that was done here. If you go to the uh, Firescape Academy site, when you get there, you just type in Firescape Academy and you're right there. And it lets you play a playlist. This playlist on the right side, when you click the playlist, uh, this city, uh, groups, groups of videos from different states. But if you want to see what Texas is doing, Chicago is doing, just go to the different ones. But uh, Portland is actually part of the um, of a group that did the last time I did a class here. Uh, Stu sent out some people with me, and I got the, the ability to train. So under nationwide inspector training, there's 21 videos there, including the Channel 7 news piece. But I just want to play one piece here that I think is important because it was, um, and we also have um, Washington, D.C., Massachusetts in here um, and some other states, but this one's a good one that it shows uh, we're doing a cantilever and it had everything wrong with it as far as uh, life safety issues. So it's a great video to move on to the first first floor of the Is that First first floor of the Give Academy inspect the training video for Foreman Hargan. Yes. So you're just We've already you're, lost the trip. Right here. So that that uh, structural right after that last thing they did with us last year. We went downtown and did a one-on-one -on -one training. These videos could be used for the future. This is a definite now. They can use the same video to train future guys. The expansion of the rust out how they lose the knowledge. It just, it just expanded enough so that it, 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 it basically popped out of the pen. All right, so but look at some other things. You see anything else on this bar skin? Just look at from here. Now you write a violation of so there you go. <laughs> see if it's going to glitch because it's too big of a Let's see if your, your people that have to climb the ladder have any issues. You see any at the joint, at the lab joint? Can you look up? Do you see anything? Okay, so let's take a look at the original. So it's the ladder, you guys, it's what you use to get into the building. So the lab joint doesn't look bad. Can any, anything, your car, any structure you, you know ever last 15, 75 years without at least one refurbishment? Okay. What, 
in the Rasa or Rasa Bank? Sometimes the wrong way, and uh, we have cases that we're going to talk about where firemen have been hurt, 
People have been hurt. We're going to cover all the cases so you can understand that this is a nationwide problem. But let's take a look at the very first piece of the class. And what is this? It's a live load test. Okay? We've got a lot of lives, and we're testing it as we speak in the moment. Now, what it doesn't have that we're going to talk about is some form of tag, like an elevator. How do you know an elevator is good in a building? It's got a tag. So one of the things that Seattle is doing, that we, when, we, when they have people fall to the ground, they have all their fire escapes, it's mandatory, that all their fire escapes, uh, Seattle and uh, Tacoma, after they took our class, but again, somebody had to fall to the ground, three people were on the third floor, they all fell to the ground, they now have a tag, seven to nine feet off the ground, and I'll show you what the tags look, there will be a tag right there, a white tag. And that white tag tells who that everything is safe for you to, for you to pile the guys on? Us, the firemen. And fire escapes are a great thing. They're made for people to self-evacuate. You're not supposed to be helping anybody. And for firemen to get in and fight the fire and save the assets. So if I can have a flag, a pink ribbon, something that I can stick on a fire escape, if we can just start hanging ribbons on these fire escapes that say they're good ones, well, Seattle actually has a tag. It's a white tag. If the fire escape is not good, it's going to be a yellow tag or a red tag. How helpful is it for every fire escape in this city which is going to take three to five years to finally get under control. It took 75 years to ignore. We're not going to fix it overnight. So if you get in the middle of the night, smoky conditions, the firemen get here, and what do you got? They got a tag here that says white, it's all right. What do they do? Do they need to wait for apparatus or get their ladders? Or can they just go right up the staircase and get, get going? And by then, one minute, 10 minutes, or an hour later, by whatever time they arrive at the fire, where's the tenants? Self-evacuating, because this is my second means of egress. It's not, come help me out the fire escape egress, it's, I can do it myself, egress. That's why it's called the second means of egress. So they're out, they're, they're gone, far away from the fire. You guys get there and the staircase is down and that's what you're using to get into the building. But now you have some problems sometimes. The can leaders go out by themselves. These are all other issues that we're gonna to cover today, but this is a live load test. Anybody on the ground? Let's talk about the load test criteria. Ready? Is that a, an average of a four by four square right there? Let's, let's demystify what load test criteria is. 100 pounds per square foot. Four times four equals 16. 16 times 100 is 1,600 pounds. A load test is very simple. Somebody's got to drag sand, water, blocks, lead, and lay it on this platform for a period of 30 minutes. Take measurements, make sure there's no deflection more than 3 16 videotape it, record it, uh, uh, engineer oversight, and do what? Say, yep, that one passed, then go do the same test to that one, and then do a test to the, uh, to the ladders and calculate how much the ladders need. Yep, you gotta move sand, water, bags, but never people. That's a load test. You know how long it takes? The load test, well, we got one going on here. Uh, and I'll have a videotape to show you guys how a load test and how it's done. Because you can also, if you don't want to carry bags, you can also put some sort of weight down below. That equals 1,600 pounds. Could be a truck, could be a lead, water, bags, anything. And you cable it up and you start pulling down on these things and there's your load test. Expensive, costly. Okay, so let's go into a few more things here. In Massachusetts, the, there's two codes in, 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 Mass, in, uh, in the United States. But they're all written the same way. Where you're looking at fire code, building code, or housing code. Must be structurally sound, must be kept painted at all times. That's the general code. When you have it, must be kept at all times, and there's no requirements to prove it every five years, guess what happens when you put the burden of, of proof on the owner? How often does he go and check his fire escapes? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, don't touch it, because it means money. So that's a lot. So every now and then, something catastrophic happens that makes somebody force an inspection every five years, or every year. California has to inspect the fire escapes every year. Okay? So... Let's take a look at what happened here. This is a, this actually won a Pulitzer Prize photograph for this, and it changed our codes. In Massachusetts, it was must be maintained at all times until this occurred. And what happened is the, this is on a four-story building in an area now that's Millionaire's Row, but this woman was there with her niece and a fireman, and basically the fire escape collapsed away. The fireman on the previous photograph, you saw they had a ladder coming at him. Guess what he grabbed and saved his life. He grabbed a ladder. He's still alive today. They just celebrated 40 years of, of this. Uh, the date is wrong on here. This should have been 2000, 
one or two thousand two, that the uh, not nineteen seventy two. Now, when she fell away, she died. The niece landed on her and survived. The fireman survived. But because of this horrific, and, the, and then with the, the, the Herald reporter getting a Pulitzer Prize photograph out of it, they basically changed the law. So now in Massachusetts, every five years, you must prove that the fire escape is certified. So it's usually something catastrophic. Same thing happened in Seattle. We were brought into Seattle probably three to four years ago because three people up on the third floor having a smoke outside their apartment. The fire escape, which was lag bolted into the building, fell down to the ground. And they called us in to say, hey, can, you know, what do you got out there that we can, that we can do? And the main uh, thing that they came up with, they went, I think, from dead last, because you could self-inspect to a certain degree in Seattle, to the number one uh, system in the country. That includes a confidence test, that includes tagging. And they're constantly tooling it up and retooling it to make sure that any uh, loopholes that are in there that are all closed up. So it's because of this that we changed our code. In the United States, 30 plus states, fire departments run all the show. They run all the inspections. In about 20 of them, building departments run the inspections. So in Massachusetts, the building department is in charge of making sure the fire escapes are safe for the firemen. So you just saw the Channel 7 news piece that said what? That the building department is doing what for the, uh, for the fire department? There's not nothing there. They're going to claim over sta understaffed, overworked, you name it. But So oh, let me finish on that. what came out of that piece that you may want to write down. Channel uh, 7 after did that piece, here's what Boston building inspectors did, uh, or the, the building the inspectional services department. They started adding things to a checklist. Let me give you one great one. Have, uh, right now in Boston, you have, a, you have a permit on your building for a bathroom, electrical light bulb, uh, a roof fix, it doesn't matter what it is. If your second means of egress is external, they can't close the permit until you have a copy of a current certification. So instead of going out and just chasing every fire escape they see, they started saying, well, these are people already spending money on their building, and they're already coming to us anyway. We're just asking them a question. It's a checklist question that says, um, I see you changed your bathroom fixture. You got a permit. Uh, to close the permit, I just need a copy of your current certification. Some people have it. Most people didn't have it. So that was the automatic. A second thing you want to suggest, the smoke detector sign off. Work with your smoke detector sign-off uh, inspectors to basically say at the end, when everything is great on a building and the smoke detector sign-off so they can have occupancy or whatever, have it on this checklist say, I need a copy of your current certification. You're not going to stop the sign-off of the, of the uh, smokes, but you're going to ask for a copy of the current certification because when the smoke goes off, where are you going? Out the front or out the back? So in order to close my... my my smoke detector sign off, I need to know that you've got a current certification because I, I just came in your front door and you've got a very beautiful stairway in the front and I just noticed that you have a second means of egress that's outside, so can I have a copy? You're not telling them to inspect. You're asking for a copy of certification and when they say, huh? You're not going to stop the certification sign off, but you've already triggered a violation because they don't have a current certification for that. So that's two things that will basically put two departments working hand in hand together. The permit process will always bring you new people that don't have a current certification and the uh, smoke detector sign off. If that helps, that's what they did in Boston. Okay? You guys remember the channel, uh, the station night fire in, in Rhode Island that killed 100 people? That's what started that fire escape, uh, the news story for Channel 7. So. When they called around, they wanted to find out if there's any other ways to get out of the fire escape. And when I told her that 75% plus of the fire escape I inspect never pass inspection, she didn't believe it. That's what the story proved, that it was true. And then number two, I also told her that over 25% to 50% of the fire escapes I inspect of the same group have life safety issues. Let's take a look at load, live load testing. See that gentleman there? One of, our, uh, one of our approved members in Chicago, that's not a picture of his dad, but his dad fell seven stories to his dad, fixing a fire escape in very much the same manner, four years ago. That's a vendor. Anybody remember these shots? This is a typical New York shot. When before AC came in, everybody used to sleep outside on their fire escape. Kids, live load testing here. How about uh, parades in um, 
in downtown Cambridge, uh, in Harvard Square, they have the, the Hasty Pudding Parade. And uh, basically there was a red, this is not the actual building, but it's a very similar building situation, that, and this is a, a dorm. Where do kids get, if they live in a dorm and there's a fire escape outside their window? And from there, the top rail was a nice cast iron molding decorative piece of cast iron. And they're leaning on it, and they're pushing it, and drinking their beers, and guess what happened to that 12-foot piece of cast? It fell down to the ground, and it came down like a missile, and it just missed the people sitting down on the stairs. But it ricocheted and whacked somebody off the head. It didn't spear him, but it whacked him off the head. You can imagine the liability that came from, from that. And uh, live blood testing by firemen again. This is when all hell's breaking loose, the firemen got to get out. And obviously, whenever they evacuate people out of buildings, they can't come down the traditional way. You've got EMS, you've got firefighters, you've got everybody coming down these fire escapes trying to get somebody out a certain way because they couldn't go out, go out the traditional way. Guess who then gets hurt? Some additional live load testing? Anybody seen this occur? Is this typical? Not the wedding one, but uh... Isn't that great? Starting out their lives and you lose a couple of groomsmen and, and bridesmaids in the action? And typical college students, you know, just coming out on anything that's a fire escape. Live load testing. So some of your fire escapes are, are in good condition, even though they may be horribly, uh, they, they may be structurally unsound. The temporary testing that you guys have implemented here, because uh, I know you also, Stu, you also mentioned you put your own guys out there on these fire escapes, correct? Correct. There's some uh, live load testing going on, right? Uh, Officially, no live load testing going on at this particular point no, in time. I mean, your own men. Yeah, but our guys are directed that if, if you look at it, out the window at it and it doesn't look safe, don't get on it. Don't get on it. If it appears to be safe, you want to take a closer look. Yes, you can get on it, but you're doing it carefully. Hopefully, so it's, based, it's all based on opinion, right? So Very much opinion. If I have a groggy morning and I haven't had my coffee, my opinion could be uh, suspect. So we're trying to say that a lot of inspectors nationwide do not ever get on these fire escapes. All your inspections as an inspector after we're done today is going to be done hoping you head out the window and you're going to be looking for original hardware, you're going to be looking for evidence of maintenance, seeing none, and you're going to be asking for a copy of a structural uh, review or a structural load test in your hand from the owner. Do you have any maintenance records? I need to see them. Seeing none, you poke your head out the window or from the ground, which we've already shown you how to do it, you look up and you say, I got a 50 to 75 year old structure. And if it has all its original hardware still on it, is that fire escape suspect or not? Okay, so why do I need to get on it any further? Do you have enough when you poke your head out the window with no load test documentation that the guy has provided you, and you stick your head out the window, you see no hex head bolts, nothing but squares and rivets. Do you need to go any further? And from the ground, do you need to go any further? You've got a violation that they have not maintained their fire escape. They may have painted it. You may be looking at a shiny black fire escape that still has its original hardware. And how can that be? In 50 to 75 years, wouldn't you expect to see some shiny bolts on the treads minimally? All the treads have been swapped out minimally once in 75 years? Would you expect to see some reinforcement or some new bolts on the supports that hold the people minimally once? Otherwise, I'll guarantee you those bolts, because somebody's getting me a live load test, that we load test in those 75-year-old bolts with a load test. So if you're not getting a load test that says those 75-year-old bolts have been tested sometime in the past, don't, don't get on. Another live load test. They're like this one. Uh, this guy had a row house, five units. Him and his son, he fixed the, the roof, did the roof himself. Look how much rust is on the roof. Five people are on this. The, um, it's, they turned it into a condo and he sold it. Uh, he had extra bolts to basically lie, bolt it back into the building. He says, ah, you don't really need them. But, so the condo owner is on there trying to sell it. So the condo owner and his real estate agent, the buyer and his real estate agent, plus another trustee from the building. Five people are on the fire escape. And this is what the treads look like, and this is what the connections look like. Oh, by the way, that fire escape is in the same condition as this one, and the one I'm shooting, there's three fire escapes that were ready to collapse. The only one that collapsed was this one, and it used to be there with five people on it, and it came down on top of this roof. It only fell one story. Nobody died. Everybody have a cell phone? The first call you make? 911 or your lawyer? Pick one. Both, because you got two cell phones. No, no, everybody, have, everybody, everybody has their own cell phone. The first lawyer, hey, I'm hurt. Dial 911 for me, please. I'll hold. 
So this is a major lawsuit that happened. And these things are occurring because Farscape are not properly attached. And if it was lab or load tested, um, but again, this is photographs of the Farscape we were on, of missing pieces and stuff. Another live load test, this is in Iowa. <clears throat> I've been uh, an expert witness in some cases. We have to go and investigate what, hap what happens and what occurred. So, this is a great one in that uh, there used to be a bracket on the other side. They have to do some work on that side over there. And what they did is uh, the vendor guys who were doing the windows and stuff took the Farscape off, which used to be through bolted. And then they put the Farscape back on, and instead of uh, through bolting it back, they just put it in with a lag screw. So a half inch hole with a half inch lag screw. Oh, by the way, got two inches of meat. Not going into a stud, just going into the wall, the wall cavity. So uh, three kids are watching the fireworks on 4th of July, and uh, from because they go to Iowa State or the, the city, the, the university there. They fall from there, fall from there, fall to the ground. That's all their blood. We go there and investigate. Oh, and like CSI, Farscape CSI. You know, we have to go investigate all the things. And so when you have such a catastrophic event, you take this Farscape and you put it where you know to secure it, secure everything. Where would you put it? I would put it in an open field of grass, maybe eight blocks away. That's what this guy did. And this is where we found the missing bolt still in the bracket. And uh, this looks like a leg. This is like the guy happened to own some open land somewhere, and he threw the fire escape over there. Well, this, this was under investigation. And it's amazing that the light bulb survived the transport. Hold on a second. Please. As you can imagine, there's a lot of lawyers around that day while we're investigating. But basically, I'm going to show the light bulb. Oh, you know, it's literally still stuck inside the thing. That's what we identified. So immediately, the next, uh, as soon as everything's all said, they can put it back. What is it? They put it back. Now they threw bolt in. Now the bat, that one's got a through bolt in it. They got this. Now you have the legs here, so they, they put some legs. As you can imagine, the torquing that was going on. And the guy was so unsure of himself that he put in a, a post into the roof, sitting on top of pressure treated wood, or right into the shingles. What do you think? <laughs> okay, right into the shingles. And so we get there. When I went there to reinvestigate this, I was actually, there's a connector in the back here that had the hole still there for you to put the lag bolts and retie that corner back in. I was able to videotape myself picking it up on the backside, lifting it and walking it two feet in one direction and bringing it back and dropping it. So even the vendor wasn't being properly overseen. He just put it back the best way he knew how. And this was a, a major lawsuit. You know, instead of hiring, you know, the best engineer and the best vendor, you know, this was sort of, Mickey Mouse backed into, into, into position. Uh, another case, uh, this is in Boston, a five-story building. You'll love this one. Um, I think she was 25, uh, either a law student or a, a um, what do you call it? I think she was in the finance or something like that. And she would come visit her boyfriend on this side, across this mountainous. mountainous. Uh, this building is obviously taller than the next building. So right up there, that fire escape right there, you can actually walk from the right side over to the left side and they had a beautiful deck. So when you're 25 years old and your neighbor has a beautiful roof deck, what do you do at 3 in the morning when you just came back from the bars and you're half drunk? So she and her boyfriend, it's her boyfriend's apartment, and she, uh, he, he knew the route. You know, you go over there and you climb over. The phone rings back in his apartment. And what is she going to do? She's going to get the phone. He goes, no, no, I'll get it. But she walks around the deck and she's not familiar because this thing's right up against the edge and there was no protective rail. See that rail? See that little hole up there? There's a rail that's supposed to be here to protect anybody from ever falling into the pit. So she falls five stories into her death over there. Missing pieces of a fire escape. Who inspects fire escapes? Structural engineers. All, every state will allow a structural engineer to inspect the fire escape, except California. We had a structural engineer in California that worked with us, and he was a bridge engineer for the state. So, but in, in, in California, there's a Reg 4 license, cost a thousand bucks, 100 question test, you gotta sit with the fire marshal and go through this whole process. So if you ever wanna get a, in, a, a license for inspectors here, Reg 4, LA, Speak with them, they'll tell you, you know, what questions to ask, and there's a, a process of, of, of getting a license. It costs you a thousand bucks, and it's 
uh, good for three years. So, but my structural engineer couldn't inspect Firescape until he got his Reg 4 license. So, you know, it's, it's kind of whack. But everywhere else in the United States, structural engineers can inspect Firescape. How about architects? Some states don't allow architects to inspect Firescape. They also say that you guys inspect Firescape all the time. I just had the fire marshal here, I just had an inspector here, I just had somebody here, and they didn't say nothing about the Firescape. They said it was fine. Why are you picking on this now? So, some people believe you guys, we try to advise them, no. City inspectors do not inspect Firescape. And they want to fight with us and say, yes, they do, and, but, you know, that's, we always send them back to you. And you got Firescape inspectors. Two licenses in the country, a Boston license, which is a G3 license, put out by the building department, and I have that license, and a license out of LA, which is put out by the fire department, and I have that license. No other license to drive a vehicle in the United States. So what, what I have to do is get on my hands and knees and, and beg uh, any city, any state that I'm coming into to say, can I inspect in your city? I have the only two licenses available. Oh, you don't have a license here. Yeah, there is no license here. But that's okay because a lot of times they just want us to back it up with a structural engineer from the city or from the state. So we come in, do our inspections, and then we just say, hey, we got to get signed off by a structural engineer. But otherwise, there's only two licenses in the country if you want to get one. California, Boston. So these are the only people inspecting fire escapes. We have some other people inspecting fire escapes, and that's companies that are welding companies that do, their, do the fire escape inspection, but then don't provide any form, any form of certification. They repair and say it's fine. Iron work companies who repair the fire escape and say hey, at the end it's fine. Painting companies that paint your fire escape and then at the end say, hey, everything is fine. But none of them are going to give you what's called the guaranteed certification. Low test or guaranteed certification. We're going to cover that what, that, what that word means. So, just eyeballing this fire escape over here. This is in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Now, this is actually the Hollywood. Uh, this is how dated this, this building is. This is actually the, the, the not the talkies, but the, uh, the silent movie era. Fort Lee was the Hollywood of the silent movie era. And this is one of the buildings that was a major studio. It's now a, it's now a storage facility. Fire escape, pass or fail inspection. This is for you guys. Pass or fail, visual only. Okay. Based on what? Uh, right? The rust has obviously uh, entered every connection, and this is a piece of the fire escape. So in case you want to get a closer up view, this is, this is what I was dealing with. Pass or fail? Okay? A structural engineer was brought in, and I have his report that said it failed. He said fix two treads and one bent, uh, one bent uh, grating and give it a paint job and I'll sign off on it. That's his report. We came in, we did the inspection and we condemned the whole fire escape. That's how big it is. Broken treads, gussets that were totally blown out. Now what's this mean? That we're a better inspection company than they are? Or that there was no standard out there set? Or is this one of those what we call fly-by drive-bys where inspectors, whether they be structural engineers, architects, fire escape inspectors, drive by a fire escape, roll down their window enough to receive the check, eyeball the fire escape and give the client that piece of paper they're buying for three to five hundred bucks says the fire escape is structurally sound and looks like it has been kept painted and then disclaimers at the bottom that's saying anything I didn't see I don't guarantee. Isn't that what this guy got? Isn't this a fly-by, drive-by check pickup? So that's what you have to be careful about because you need some form of some form of document and now Seattle and Tacoma have it. It's called the fire escape confidence test. It's a question and answer. It's like a final exam for the engineer. Have you checked this? Have you checked that? Is this, did this pass? Did this not pass? Is there any rust inside the connection? Any internal? Any external? Did you check the defects? Did you check for hidden defects? Did you check into the interior of the wall? Those are all questions that are now, now being asked. So if you're doing fly-by drive-bys, will you sign that document that will put your house, your business, and everything you own at risk? Let's take a look at confidence tests out there. There is no confidence test in the nation. So we had to design one, and when we designed it, we let many state um, fire departments and building departments copy our, our documentation and use it as a basis, and, that, and that's what 
um, Seattle did in Tacoma, but this is actually the confidence test out of the right four in LA. So basically you fill out all the front and you, you basically describe what you're inspecting and then you do a write-up on the second page. The thing I like about this page is that it gives everything about the, uh, all the client information, all the testing information, and then down here it has all the information that we need. Building inspector, fire marshal, permit numbers, everything that you need to have to, in order for that to be a legitimate repair. So this page belongs to the, to the official. So we took the Reg 4 and we copied the Reg 4 so that we have all the information including the area for the seal. And then page 2 we actually asked questions, yes no questions. So this is our, this is our testing and it's just yes no questions. There's a structural questionnaire, there's a general questionnaire and then there's places for you to write any changes. From that when we spoke in Seattle and Tacoma they used these questions and they generated this. Now this is a page one, so if you want to copy an existing system, you can just go to seattle.org, fire prevention, and they have tests in there. And not just for fire escape, they have confidence tests for sprinklers, uh, smoke detectors, everything. So why, why reinvent the wheel when you can just copy? The better test is Seattle's, not Tacoma's. But there's a couple things that Tacoma did that I like that I'm going to share with you in a second. But basically, uh, here's all the information that you have about the building. Here's all the information you have about the yes no's. And Tacoma did one more thing that Seattle didn't do. It involved the owner on a yearly basis with a what's called an annual walkthrough. This annual walkthrough, which we've incorporated, is basically what makes the owner now or the owner's agent have to walk through during your yearly inspections with them. You walk the fire escape with them. That's been certified last year. <coughs> So for the next five years, the owners go through and they ask a very simple question. You know, does, does anything look damaged? Did it pass or fail? Is the paint still good? And all the moving parts still good? Three questions. Can you sign at the bottom? And they would hand this.